Hi, I'm David with General Air. Modern AC TIG welders have two features on them that I certainly can't live without. One is the AC balance control and the AC frequency control. Let's take a closer look at what these do to an aluminum weld. This is the Dynasty 280, and this machine does have alternating current, which I've selected on the machine. Now I'm ready to set my balance and my AC frequency control. But what do these actually do? Well, let's first look at balance control. Balance control controls how much negative and positive we have in our alternating current sine wave. The percentage we see here is how much negative we have. So I can scroll this all the way down to a 50-50 negative positive, all the way up to a 99-1. So let's do a bunch of different welds and see how this balance control affects what the bead looks like. All right, this weld was done with 60% negative, 40% positive. That is a lot of positive. So the electrons are moving from our base plate into our tungsten 40% of the time. Now some of the downsides of doing this is there's a lot of aluminum oxide that gets washed around. The positive stroke of our AC sine wave is what ionizes our aluminum oxide so we can get the aluminum underneath. So it gives you this big cloud around your weld. And as you can see that this weld is pretty dull and not very good. And I had to use a lot of amperage in order to get this weld. I had to floor out my machine at 150 amps just to get it to melt. The other problem is, is since the electrons are now backing up into my tungsten, it really heats up my tungsten. I don't know if you can see this very well, but that tungsten is actually melted. The little ball that I'd made on the end has melted to the side. There's a bunch of lanthium nodules. That's where the lanthium that's inside this 2% lanthanated tungsten spit itself out. And overall, it's just in bad shape and it needs to be redressed before we make another weld. 60% negative, 40% positive is really not my favorite as far as the balance control goes. So let's bring up the negative. Let's go to 70-30 now, redress this tungsten, and get ready to weld. All right, so that balance there was 70-30, much, much better. We didn't throw around as much aluminum oxide, didn't melt the tungsten, and got a pretty decent weld out of it. But I think that it still needs more negative. So I'm gonna go up to my favorite setting, which is an 80-20, 80% negative, 20% positive. And then we'll compare and see how much better the weld will be with those settings. All right, that weld was with 80-20, so way less positive, 20%, and way more negative, which is what we want. Negative is the penetrating side of the AC stroke. Now, the other thing we can see here is a much brighter weld. There's not as much of the aluminum oxide that got thrown around. One of the downsides, though, is now we're getting into the point where we have nah, maybe not enough cleaning action, and we can start getting some black flecks or some other contamination floating around in our weld. Now, to fix that, we could just go back and re-clean the aluminum with an alum or excuse me, a stainless steel wire brush or some denatured alcohol or some acetone. I use phosphoric acid in an Aluma Clean uh, solution. But the cleaner it is, the less positive you have to use and gives you a much cleaner, more penetrating weld. All right, that weld was done with 90-10, 90% negative, 10% positive. So very little cleaning action. Now, one of the benefits to this is you get a lot of penetrations, real easy on the tungsten. There's not much heat going in there. And the arc, uh, it, it flows pretty smooth because you got a lot more heat into the aluminum. Now, the downsides are it doesn't clean as well. There's not enough cleaning action. So a lot more little imperfections, maybe some black flecks in the weld. 
Uh, and the frosting line here on the sides is really, really short. There's not much here and there's not much there. Now this could be a good thing though if you're anodizing your part because that frost line won't color the same as the base material. So if you're going to put your part through an anodize, well, it's going to get a coating on it anyways. So a lot of people don't really care that there has some imperfections on the weld because of course the anodizing is going to cover that up. Something to consider. But when I'm just doing regular welds and I'm going to leave my aluminum raw, I want a little bit more cleaning action than this. All right, that was our last one we did. That was 99% negative, 1% positive. So as little cleaning action as I can go on my Dynasty 280. Now, the benefits are you've got a lot of negative, so it gets a really good penetration, but that's not really what you're looking for with one, inth, one eighth inch plate like we're welding on here. The downsides are for sure a lot of black flecks and things that were floating around in the weld that didn't get ionized or pushed out to the side. That's what we see with more cleaning action is we see that etchant line on the sides of the weld where this one has none. All those contaminants get pushed away to the side and we're able to get a nice clean weld out of it. Uh, I don't see a reason why to use this 99.1. I definitely want some more cleaning action for sure, uh, but then you can do it. Now that we've seen what balance control can do, let's take a look at frequency control. Now, coming out of our wall in North America, we have 60 hertz. And older TIG machines, that's what they were stuck in, is 60 hertz. But when we're able to increase that frequency, what happens is the, the arc is actually going to narrow in and we're able to get more focus from our AC well. Let's take a look at a few scenarios where this AC frequency control really helps us out. Since we did the last round with all 60 hertz, we saw plenty of welds done at that frequency. This is 120 hertz, double of course. Now what it's doing is it's going to narrow our arc in and it's going to cool our puddle down. The higher the frequency, the less heat we put into our plate. But the big benefits are the control you get over the puddle. It welds a lot more like DC does the higher you get up into the frequency range. So even right now, the weld doesn't look much different than our 60 hertz weld, but from my standpoint, the operator, it was way easier to weld with. This weld was done with 185 amps, which is higher than this one. Like I'd said before, that's gonna narrow the puddle out. But if you look at them, now well, they look exactly the same. Well, what's going on now is we've got our arc really, really, really tight, and we've got things really cooled down a lot. So actually, we can go down a size in our tungsten and also down a size in our filler metal. So we're gonna do this weld again, but this time we're gonna use 1 16th lanthanated tungsten and and 1 16th 40-43 filler metal. Now we're gonna see a dramatic change in the size of the weld. Let's take a look. Now using the 1 16th tungsten and filler metal, we're able to start bringing the size of the weld down because the focus of the arc is so much better at these higher frequencies. Let's keep going up and see if we can get a really small weld. three hundred and fifty hertz now that was great it gave me a super focused arc and we got this really really small bead now we're getting into the frequency range that three hundred to four hundred plus hertz where really eighth inch plate is pretty dang thick if you remember like i said earlier the higher we go in the frequency the lower we get into the penetration now uh, for 350 hertz, the material that I would like to be welding on is probably about 18 gauge, 20 gauge aluminum, somewhere around that neighborhood. But I wanted to demonstrate just how small of a weld we can get and how much focus we can get with this AC frequency control. 
Now that we've seen the differences between balance control and frequency, just on some lap joints, I will also want to take a look at how frequency control can help us in situations where we have different types of joints, like this T joint here. Now with the regular 60 hertz weld, what would be happening is I'd be melting this part of the material and this part of the material, and it would take a long time before I got the penetration into the root of the weld. But when I bring my frequency control up, in this case we're going to use 165 hertz, that arc is just going to go right where it needs to be in the root of the weld. Now I wanted to give us some examples where high AC frequencies really don't help you whatsoever. And this is a scenario, we've got an eighth inch plate up top, but we have a quarter inch plate on the bottom. This is actually where I want to use a lower AC frequency, get more heat into that lower quarter inch plate so we could actually get a weld flow in here. So where's a good place to start for something like this? Well, I'm going to go right down to 60 hertz and get some tack welds in here and we'll see how 60 hertz does. All right, and there it is at 175 amps at 60 hertz with our 1 8 inch tungsten. That lower frequency really helped to get enough heat into the quarter inch plate, and I actually got good tie in here. It's a bit of the tricky part with welding a thick to thin piece of aluminum is that the thicker piece doesn't want to melt, and the thinner piece really just wants to blow away. There you have it, AC frequency control and AC balance control. If I'm in the market for a TIG machine to weld on aluminum and it doesn't have those two features, well, that's a deal breaker. I wouldn't get that machine. Thank you for watching. If you like our videos, please subscribe. And if you want more information on general air service and supply, head over to our Facebook page where you can like and follow us there.